So I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm Neil and one of the doctors, we're going to very gently move your shoulder back in. At no point am I going to pull or yank on it or, or make it too painful. Um, but I'm going to move very, very slowly. I need to get you in position first of all. We're going to move your shoulder around. If it's really, really sore, I'm going to ask you to stop me. Um, but we'll hopefully be able to do this nice and comfortably. One of the things that I need to tell you is that because of the way your shoulders come out, there's muscles that are spasming and they're, they're keeping it out at the moment. When it starts to move, I'll ask you to completely relax, let me do all the movement, and it will fall back in. When it goes to go back in, try not to spasm, because you'll be holding it out. All right, so, is Simon got his um, humerus adducted at the moment? It's pretty good, actually. So, we're gonna try if we can make it even better. What I'm gonna do is put a roll of the towel behind Simon's spine, and what that will actually do is allow him to um, move his scapula back a little bit. Okay, so come back into there. Shoulders back for me, and chest out. So I'm actually going to grab hold here and I'm holding it here. This is not traction, okay? If I start yanking on Simon, what's going to happen? Yeah, he's going to tense up, he's going to spasm, it's going to be really painful. One of the reasons why you get a weird sensation in dislocations is that the pain is caused by the, the capsule being stretched. So it's not like having a broken bone. It's a really weird sensation. You often get a quite a vague response from patients. So what I'm actually doing by um, taking control of this and holding it is that I'm reducing that um, capsular stretch a little bit, okay? And if we get this right into the side and reduce the capsular stretch, it goes further towards where it should be normally. It's often really a lot more comfortable for the patient. So this is what I call the analgesic position. I'm going to do it like this. So I'll do cockers on Simon, then I'll describe it. Okay, how comfortable are you at the moment? Fantastic. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do some more movements now. I'm going to get you to stay as relaxed as you possibly can. You've seen now that, that I'm not going to hurt you. I'm not going to do any yanking or pulling or anything. So please let me know if it's sore. I'm going to very gently move this out to the side. And when we feel it stop, I'll stop. Now, it may reduce at that point. This is the first maneuver of cockers. Um, it's, it's essentially external rotation. And then we're going to move it up to here. It won't reduce here. The idea of this particular maneuver, the second maneuver, is to uh, twist the capsule. And by twisting the capsule and tightening it, it actually lifts the head up onto the rim. It won't reduce at this point, but that's the point of it. And once it's up onto the rim, if you move it across like this, it slips back in. So that's what cockers looks like. Okay? There is no traction with cockers. Cockers was originally designed on cadavers. The, the original study was done like that. They were subcoracoid injuries. It was not designed for subglenoid injuries. So if you're using it for subglenoid injuries, you're using the wrong technique. It might work, it probably does sometimes, but it's actually designed for subcoracoid injuries. Now, this bit here requires an intact greater tuberosity. So if you don't have an intact greater tuberosity, you can't do those bits. So if you've got a subglenoid injury with a greater tuberosity fracture and you're using cockers, it makes no sense at all. You're essentially applying the wrong technique to the injury that you've got in front of you. So if you say, I use cockers for everything, then you're probably going to have a reasonable failure rate on patients who, A, don't have an intact greater tuberosity, or B, have got a, a subglenoid injury. You'll notice that I didn't use any traction there. 
I'm holding Simon's arm firmly, but I, I'm not using any traction or pulling down any points. If you start to use traction, you'll get one of two things happen, both of which are bad. One, you'll get spasm and pain and tightness, and that will stop the head from moving because you'll get an increase in your dynamic forces. And two, you may pull a patient into abduction, which is not ideal.